Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Drew back again with another video for all you American soccer fans out there. And today I have two very special guests from One Goal US, Rohan and Jake. Welcome to the channel, guys. What's up? What's up, man? Thanks for having us. Yeah, bro. So if you guys, real quick, you guys do not follow One Goal US on Twitter or Instagram or even YouTube, the description is down below. You guys can get on there if you're true American soccer fans. Thank you, so thank today you. I had to team up with these guys to do a super collab to talk about the USMNT's game against Trinidad and Tobago, January 31st. Lots to talk about, lots to look forward to. Um, but so let's just jump right into it. So first thing we got to talk about, guys, is the lineup. That's the thing people are always talking about. Who's going to start? Will Josie start? Will he start? This is what I think. So for my lineup, I can see you guys can see, see it on the screen right here. I have Turner and goal. Araujo as a right back. Center back duo was Robinson and Aaron Long. Liverpool prospect over there. <laughs> Sam Vines, uh, Jackson Ewell, Tessman, Mueller, Leggett, Ariola, and DK. What do you guys think about that? Who do you think should stay and who do you think should be replaced by someone else? Well, first, first things off the bat, I will say I think you've got the one player who Burhalter loves the most in the lineup at the heart of it, Sebastian Leggett. You know he's yeah, he's Berhalter favorite. <laughs> he I'm, is like he's that, wild. That'd be inner time I entered Berhalter. Yeah, now, there you go. <laughs> you know, should be at the nine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. You should be playing that false nine role again. <laughs> That's you right. know, I I think uh, we're we're gonna need a strong uh, striker up top um, to to kind of be athletic and and you know have some good hold up play. I, I agree. I think DK is going to be in there. You know, I, I think it's a 50, 50 between DK or out the door, whoever starts. Um, and, you know, it'll just be a like for like sub that we'll see uh, when one of those strikers comes off and co uh, or comes on. So I agree with most of this lineup. I'm also excited to see um, Tanner Testman in there. Who's, who's also just a beast. He's, he's uh, a, beast, he's a monster. I mean, he was, he was supposed to play football at Clemson. So <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, chose was actually, yeah. he was actually their field goal kicker for, a little bit which is crazy that, wow yeah well there you go so let's see it tearing up in the midfield yeah i'd love to see testman but i'm not very confident that we'll see him i'm pretty sure we're going to see Pereira there um prayer may end up benching yule but Burhalter seems to really like yule so i imagine we're probably going to see like yeah this double pivot type of thing with yule and Pereira. yule taking more of the ball on the ball responsibility and prayer acting as that all out destroyer. I'd yeah. love to see Tessman though. I think he's got a lot to offer and he's kind of a, the best of both that you will and prayer have to offer. Yeah, but definitely attacking definitely. I think, uh, you know, him filing that switch, he's getting the start. Yeah, for sure. He's he's has sell he has to, if not, he might be alongside Christian Roll Dan. I forgot about him. <laughs> Another one of Berhalter's favorites. Let's yeah. hope, let's hope not. <laughs> Yeah, but and I think honestly, I think Joe's. I'm, I'm excited to see how Josie out the door. If he starts, how he reacts to his recent criticism from a lot, a lot of units MNT fans about him being in the lineup or just in the squad in general. You know I what? I what I will say about Altador is he's probably one of the biggest supporters of all the young talent coming through. Yeah. Go on his social media. He's always like throwing dabs at players. He's always, you know um cheering them up um and and kind of just like having their back um i love that and then you know recently he came out with comments saying like hey i mean like look at lewandowski he's still killing it at 30 plus years old people think you know once you're over 30 you, your career kind of goes bust but you know he's he's you know talking out in the media and, he, and he's saying he, hey i'm still here so i would love to see him score honestly i mean you know, i would love yeah i would love to see him make a statement like look i'm still the best striker in usmnt and here's why so yeah, I, want still, him, I want him to prove me wrong. The Josie Flander is just annoying and it's so obnoxious. It makes no sense. Like he's, I understand people getting upset with players like Mike, Michael Bradley because they have played bad with the U.S. in the past. But Josie, almost every time he plays, he plays respectably, if not good. Like his worst games are still decent and his good games are amazing. And he's a showstopper. Whereas other, like I get it. Like Bradley has had some horror shows out there, but Altidore hasn't, and I think he gets lumped in unfairly and unjustly criticized. He's a, yeah, he's a great player. He still has a lot to offer. He does struggle with injury, but that, that doesn't mean he shouldn't be involved in a camp. Until we have, you know, five, six strikers that are all better than him, he needs to be there. And, yeah, yeah I'd love to see him start or 
but maybe for his hamstrings, we should keep him on the bench, bring him on at like the 70th. Like a 70th. Yeah. yeah. You know, I agree. So, so piggybacking off that, I want to know who you guys are most excited to see um, hopefully get a debut. A good question. For me, I think it's got to be Tessman. I'm a, I'm a big Tessman fan. Uh, yeah, like I said, if he starts, that'd be amazing. But if I had to bet, I think he's going to end up subbing on at like the 70th, yeah. 80th minute. And I just want to see him because I think he's got a lot to offer. He's very versatile. He's rangy. He's physical. He's everything that we need in the midfield. I'm really excited to see him. Yeah, I think for me, and I'm sure a lot of USMNT fans agree, it's it's Daryl DK. Like, I, I just want to see him tear it up. Um, he he is he's like the American Lukaku, you know. I mean, that is a crazy yeah. comparison, but I yeah, mean, it's true that I've heard it. He's 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 very dynamic on the ball. Just has that power and speed to just plow through defenders and just rip a shot on goal. I mean, I love that. That is an exciting striker that you can kind of build an attack around. He's mm-hmm. always going to be dangerous. Um, and I, and I want to see it, you know, I really want to see him um, score a couple goals and, and just do something uh, spectacular in a USA Jersey. Same. And honestly, we need it. We need him to come out and show out and show perform well. Cause we don't like, we don't have that air apparent to Altidore right now. That's Josh is up in there, everyone else it's, they're not established. So it'd be amazing for him to just come out and show he can fit in. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Comes out. Just absolutely scores a freaking hat trick. Chris <laughs> Mueller, uh, Chris Mueller assisting all three goals. Yeah, I love it. Crazy. I want to see it. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the lineup. I'm excited to see these young guys get an opportunity to to get to get some playing time for the USMNT and really show us what they can offer us going forward. Especially comparing them to like the European American soccer players. It's just we have a lot of talent. I'm glad we get to see both sides of the world of our guys get, you know, get a chance. So going off that, Jake, I know you had some questions you wanted to ask us. Yeah, so I think the <laughs> the most pressing question, and I think the the question that USMNT Twitter has been asking for the better part of three months, really, is how good is Matt Turner actually? Um, I really want to see how he does, how he performs, because there's – the USMNT fan base has kind of been divided into two factions. We have the the Turner truthers and then the Zach Steffen believers. Yeah. So yeah. I want to see how Turner like shows out in his, uh, his first performance with like some real pressure on him. Cause he knows that if he performs well, he very well could make his way into contention for that number one spot. Yeah. Whereas if he showed, if he just had a horror show, um, you know, all that talk is going to die down and he's really, he missed it. That boat is going to sail. So I want to see if he can handle the pressure and yeah, if he really is ready to challenge Zach Steffen for a starting spot. I'm optimistic, but cautiously optimistic. (laughs) What do you guys think? Yeah, uh, I think the same. Um, I think Turner is definitely right now the number two goalkeeper for USA. I know a lot of people going, like you said, you know, comparing him and Zach Steffen. I'm on the Zach Steffen believer train. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I think Turner could give him run for his money. I'm curious to see how well he's going to do, especially with all the talk going around about him right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Matt Turner, one thing you can knock him for is, is his consistency. Like he had a really solid, like full season for uh, the Revs. And, yeah. you know, with Stefan, when he's put on a USMNT jersey, he, of course, come up with some incredible saves. And I also, you know, I love Zach Stefan. Um, he's, he has made a couple of mistakes. I mean, you think back to the USA Mexico game where he had some poor distribution. Um, so, you know, some USA fans might remember that and just be like, well, you know, maybe if Turner proves himself with a really solid showing, um, he he can, he can maybe leave Frog Stefan. You know, I don't know personally, I still think, um, Zach Stefan is the undisputed number one, but for sure, I mean, Turner stock can go up with a very solid performance. Um, I'd also be interested to see if he just gets tested at all. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. Also. We don't know how. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is a good point, man. That's a good point. Yeah. He might not even get tested as much as we'd like him to be. Yeah, but Trinidad and Tobago do have some speedy wingers. Um, you know, Kevin Molino, he's, uh, oh, he's a very good player. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I mean, also, I think it's important to note that if Turner plays well and he gets some call-ups in the summer, 
with all the craziness that's happening in the congested fixture list and he performs well, it's not out of the question that he could get a European move. And then say he goes to an Everton and he's starting week in and week out where Zach Steffen is the cup goalie for Man City. I think the, the answer to this question gets a lot tougher. Yeah. Um, of who needs to start. That, that would definitely spice things up if he were to get a good move like that and start be a starter, not a cup, cup keeper. And I think like, yeah, the, the summer window, like the summer schedule, he'll have the opportunity to earn that move. So I'm excited to see that. The second thing I want to see too, and I'm, uh, it's the Sam Vines uh, Bellow battle. I, uh, I'm team Sam Vines. I don't have a whole lot of stock in George Bello just because his first touch drives me crazy and I worry about how well it's going to translate to a higher level where Sam Vines he's not he's not as he's not going to do as much as Bello does in the final third or get up and down like Bello can but he's not going to mess up and that's all I want for my left back just do your job um don't mess up whereas Bello I think that first touch can get away from him and it could lead to some costly turnovers um, but I haven't been in camp. Who knows? Maybe Bell has been tearing it up and he's going to get the start. So I want to see, yeah, that, are you guys interested in that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm also on the Sam Vines train. I think he's just, like I said, more technically better player. I think he's just more puts in more solid performances than Bellow. So like, and they, like I said, we are not in the camp, so we don't know how he's progressing, but I still, I expect Vines to be the starter. And I expect Vines to right now be a better left back. Yeah, completely agree. I can't disagree. Um, I I think George Bellow is is a pretty uh, spectacular athlete. I mean, he's got that incredible pace. He can just kind of make overlapping runs um, very well on that left flank, um, which is kind of like a part of of, of Burhalter system. He does want uh, his his left back to support uh, wingers, um, but also a really important part for being a left back in the system is just being able to distribute. Uh, and combine well with the, the midfield um, as you're just kind of like retaining possession when you're trying to like disorganize the opponent by drawing them in. So I think Vines is much better at that. I think he's really good at taking some pressure on, playing a good pass. We need to switching the ball. Uh, and I think just offensively also, he, he's a little bit more solid. Uh, there's this like video on YouTube that of, of, a game against LAFC where he was just like one-on-one -on -one against like Vela again in when Vela was in his prime uh, playing for LAFC and he was just like he, he pocketed him so it really shows that he actually has very good one-on-one -on -one defensive skills um, and he'll need that against like speedy Trinidad and Tobago wingers definitely yeah and when we have Sergio Dest and now Brian Reynolds and Reggie Cannon on the right hand side are we, it helps to have a safer and more conservative left back while he still needs to be able to get up it he also need his primary job needs to be defending and helping us be solid in the back Definitely. and um yeah so the next question i have is how do tanner testman and andres Pereira fit which i kind of alluded to earlier i'm really curious to see how these guys did in camp fingers crossed they displaced christian roldan in the pecking order and that's like the last we've seen of him and it, <laughs> nothing against Roldan. It's just, he's, he's just not what he's not going to progress us to the next level. He's not yeah, the guy. He's so inconsistent too with the USMNT. Like he's just, none of his performance has really impressed me enough. Like, yeah, this guy should be definitely starting all our games. Yeah, exactly. He just, he's boring. And Tanner Chessman and Andres Prayer are not uh, for very different reasons. Andres Prayer, he's more of a, you know, nasty tackle gets stuck in, not afraid to, you know go two foot into someone um and I like that I want to see that we need a little bit of that especially come CONCACAF time yeah. and Tanner Tessman he's uh he's interesting right because like you guys said he's a, a physical specimen and he's you know he was playing he could have played football at Clemson so he's built like that but he still has that like silky smooth mm -hmm. way about him on the ball and he can ping a 50 60 yard ball um across the field like Burhalter loves and he can also like dribble through you uh and his shot is crazy. He's got that, that kicker strength. Uh, so <laughs> I really want to see that. He's interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, Ted, Terrence has been definitely probably my favorite midfield right now. To, my most excited one to watch in this camp. 
Um, and I think in his youth, his youth career with FC Dallas, he scored a really handful of goals as well. So he's not just a defender. He's really all around midfield, like going up attack, go back defense. Like you said, he's, he's built like a big dude, but he moves like, like water, bro. Like he can just <laughs> weave in. It's crazy. That's a good combination though. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and also shout out to the FC Dallas Academy. I mean, they just keep on churning out talent. That is, that is fire. Just to see another player coming through, um, getting uh, you know minutes in an American jersey, it, it, I am also thrilled to see uh, Tanner Chespin hopefully getting some playing time. Um, and of course, Andres Pereira, for all the reasons that you guys talked about, he he should be exciting as well. And it's always great to see Burhalter with another dual national yeah. win. It's 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 something special. It's very American in a way. So <laughs> yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Uh, the last or the fourth question I have is, was Muller's performance in December a fluke or is that was it a sign of things to come? He couldn't have had a better debut with the USMNT. It was yeah. I mean, he was world class that night. I don't think he's world class like every night, but that night he was. And there are those players that when they just put on the jersey, they're just a different beast altogether. And maybe Muller's that. Um, so, yeah, I'm really curious to see that. Uh, What's he do? How does he follow up the sophomore slump? Is it going to happen or is he just going to continue to improve and be even better than he was? And just, yeah, he's going to bench Christian Pulisic. Who knows? <laughs> I <love> that. <laughs> that would be crazy, man. Um, yeah, no, I think he did, like I said, an amazing, crazy beast performance for his debut against El Salvador. Um, well, he had a brace, I think, in that game. Mm-hmm. He was on fire. He, he was like all over the pitch. I like his work rate. I like his attacking. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious to see how he's going to do. Um, I think turned on Tobago. I think it's somewhere he, his game, he can be able to handle going forward. So maybe another brace there. And if he does, that's going to put people in the conversation like, hey, who's better, Jordan Morris or Chris, Chris Mueller? Or Chris Mueller. Well, <laughs> yeah no but i'm excited for that dude he he's gonna be one to watch definitely yeah for sure i think i think he's gonna come out with like the same chip on his shoulder and he's gonna be like i want to prove myself again you know this is an opponent that i can go all you know all in at i, I don't think burhalter is gonna ask him to play a little bit more reserved or like you know make sure you're chasing all the balls back and make sure you know you you know he's gonna say go out there play with the same energy you did last time play with the freedom you know do whatever you want to make those late runs into the box take players on and he's gonna do that I mean he had he exploded last season right like in 2019 he had nine goals and assists 2020 17 yeah he he really just kind of rocketed up there and then to cap it off with that performance in his debut it it was perfect so a great finish in the year yeah yeah, so let's let's see it again. I, I, I fully expect him to come out with energy. Um, I don't think it was a fluke. Yeah, and uh, what you kind of touched on it in Rohan, like my favorite thing about Mueller is his willingness just to try things. He's, uh, there's a lot of wingers, Chris, or players in general in the pool, Christian Roldan being one of them, that they just play very safe and they never try, and yeah, they never try something. And Mueller's not that. He does not care. He's going to try that audacious flick. He's going to try like the double step over take on. And we need that in the pool, um, especially from our wingers. And that's what I love about him. He's a, uh, yeah, he's got confidence, like enough confidence for our entire team. So I want to see him just uh, show out and do what he can do. He's an exciting guy to watch. Sure. And then, yeah, my final and fifth and final question mm-hmm. is about his teammate uh Daryl DK what is he um you know we saw him this year with Orlando he looked really good really solid he reminded reminds me a lot of Josie and as Josie's mm-hmm. career starts winding down it'd be awesome to see Daryl DK you know pick up the torch and yeah carry us forward I um we haven't seen a whole lot of him I think he's only played like 17 professional games mm-hmm. so in the international game it's just different even if it is just Trinidad and Tobago it's it's a different beast and um yeah I want to see how he does it's one thing to perform in MLS it's another thing to do it on the world stage so I'm very curious to see him yeah like, like we touched on earlier with the lineup I think Josie most likely will start I think DK will definitely play I, I don't think he won't won't play I think he has to play Berhalter knows he's got to play starting or coming out at super sub 
I want to see this guy get a goal. I think he's got the ability to get a goal. I like his his hold up play. He's a strong striker. He's I think our strongest probably striker, even compared to like other other strikers in Europe, like Josh Charger, Matthew Hoppy. Um, you know, maybe like not as strong as Josie, but still this guy's young, he's learning, breakout season for Orlando, hopefully a breakout debut for the USMNT. For sure. You know, I'm in the same boat. I, mean, I think Burr Halter is going to want to unleash the beast and he's going <laughs> to let him loose and he's, he's going he's gonna to score because he's probably thinking from the last game, you know, Burr Halter gave some minutes to Sebastian Soto. He gave some minutes to Giochini. They both mm-hmm. scored braces. You know, they both like came on and were like ready Fire. to go. Yeah. So he's going to, he's also going to come in with, uh, you know, uh, the, the need and the desire to, to score. Um, I, I think I expect him to, to hold up the ball. Well, I expect him to like turn and, and use his strength to his abilities. Um, I think that's probably, you know, when you think about what type of player he is, that's probably his, his best quality, um, how he enables his strength and how he spins and accelerates to, to speed away. So, yeah let's let's uh you know I, i'd love to see that yeah i think the the best thing too is chris mueller and daryl dk already had that connection from orlando so oh. bring that onto the usmnt it's going to be even just a smooth transition hopefully for them yeah, and that's... Pereira. so <laughs> and Pereira, really yeah the entire field together the orlando city connection that could be that could be something good for us and actually uh isn't uh benji michelle also uh, an Orlando player. He's, he's, uh, I think he was named in the game day roster too. So yeah, yeah. he is. I don't really know much about him. Um, yeah, like I don't watch a lot of Orlando city. And when I do, I'm really focusing on Daryl Deacon and Chris Mueller. Yeah. And now Andres Pereira, but uh, mm-hmm. Benji Michelle has not uh, caught my eye. I don't know much about him. Yeah. Uh, I, I know he's on the younger side and he's, uh, I mean, he scored a pretty nice goal in practice. I think the USMNT put that up on Instagram. <laughs> but, that was a dreamer. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah. So uh, he, he's skilled. But, yeah, I mean, uh, hey, it's a, it's a question mark for me. I, I, I'd love to see him do something special. So hope he gets some minutes as well. Same. I hope that's it. So before we go, I, want to know, I have another question for you guys. Not really related to this game, but news broke out today. What are you guys' thoughts or what the heck is going on with Aaron Long being linked to Liverpool? <laughs> what is what's happening that is a good question i mean i think uh i mean i think his his agent is probably feeling a little salty from the west ham move falling through in the last window and you know he's maybe trying to uh oh hey liverpool has a lot of injured defenders you know aaron long is a great player he could you know but i mean i think honestly i i think any move to Europe would be great for, for Aaron Long. Obviously, I feel bad because I'm a Red Bulls fan. But at the same time, I do love seeing uh, American talent uh, go abroad and, and, you know, only increase the American brand. So um, I, if it happens, you know, more power to him, more power to Liverpool. Um, but, you know, I think he's much more in his league playing for a, a mid-tier, um, mm-hmm. you know, a mid-tier league or a mid-tier Premier League team. Um, but hey, if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong. Yeah, I actually heard it was going to be a, a straight swap between a Van Dyke and Aaron Long at Red Bulls. I would love Van Dyke on the Red Bulls. Let's go. <laughs> Nobody would score against the Red Bulls. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's a lot of weight to this. Uh, this rumor i i think maybe yeah maybe they just kicked the tires to see what it would cost and he'd be brought in as a backup but i don't know i also didn't see weston mckinney going to juve honestly and yeah sure look what he did you're a lot of players like they're only as good as the players around them so who knows maybe he gets to liverpool and he just levels up and you know he benches van dyke (laughs) (laughs) unlikely but uh, i'm curious to see yeah he's um he stylistically i think he'd be a good fit um just technically i don't know if he he can handle it like the the ball pressure responsibilities. yeah it's like it's a different beast i think he'd be i don't know i'm i'm curious to see what happens um yeah so we'll see but sorry right, so last thing before we let you guys go i need score predictions my score prediction i'm gonna go 4-1 usmnt i will say 
another six zero. <laughs> I think we're gonna steamroll them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be bad. I would. I'm gonna go at yeah, five six one. Uh, Trinidad, they, they messed up in 2017. They're uh, they're never gonna get. They're like our that, our second arch rival now. Next time, <laughs> yeah. Like every time we face this team, we want to just destroy them. Never it's gonna get ugly. Never yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, thank you guys for coming to the channel. I appreciate it. You guys, if you watch this, make sure you guys check out their social media links. I'll leave down below. Um, it was fun, guys. I can't wait to watch this game. I'll be watching it live on the channel. Uh, if you guys are watching live stream on Sunday night. So be awesome. sure you guys are here. Awesome. We had a blast. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Let's see you.